You're listening to Fighting Back, News Talk, current events, and political commentary. Now here's the host of Fighting Back, Uncle Ronnie. Okay, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, As we continue the show, I'd like you to know that we have Mr. Mark Fincham. He's a representative from the state of Arizona. And welcome to the show, Mark. Thank you, Ron. And we're uh, we're here today. We're going to talk about what Arizona is doing to stop the steal. This state has gone for Donald Trump in a fairly substantial way, but the votes have been stolen through deceit, deception, and uh, sleight of hand. Um, what I want to do real quick, Mark, is just tell what, what went on. We have a Secretary of State, a Democrat, who publicly has gone on and called Trump supporters neo-Nazis. No, she actually called us Nazis. Not, 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 not neo-Nazis? neo-Nazis? Nazis. Okay, so, yeah. we're, so it's called Republicans Nazis. We have a Maricopa County... Uh, board of Super, and I'm, we'll get to the Board of Supervisor next. I want to go to the county recorder. Uh, this gentleman is also a Democrat, and he has been known for sleight of hand. This man has had issues that had to go all the way to the Supreme Court, Mark, as you know. And the Supreme Court told him, don't do this, and he ignored the court. He did what Yeah, well, he the good news is anyway. he's going to be out of office in about 50 minutes. <laughs> Uh, well, the that, new county recorder is supposed to be sworn in today at one o'clock. Excellent, excellent. Well, we we want we're glad to get rid of him. Unfortunately, I understand he's going down to Pima County to be an assistant uh, county recorder there, which is bad news as well. Uh, but he may be behind bars soon for some of the things that he's pulled. I'm thinking an orange suit. <laughs> He'd look good in orange. Yeah. In Arizona, we don't use stripes; we use orange. So or pink. <laughs> <laughs> the old which, days. Uh, yeah. At any rate, and then we have a board of supervisors in Maricopa County, and uh, they, uh, they've they done the unthinkable. They actually, Mark, they've actually certified votes where they weren't sure of the certification, and uh, that was really bad in their own right. Most of them are being recalled. As a matter of fact, I don't know if all five of them, but the vote was uh, four to one. And we know at least four of them are now being recalled. And again, in Arizona, we can call back people if they're not doing their job. Um, And then we go to our governor, and our governor has not been real supportive either. He uh, he, he's uh, just kind of said, well, we won't let the current legislature do any duties here. We're going to go to the new legislature, which is sworn in in another week or so. Is that correct? Uh, That'd be correct on January 11th, I believe, is the first day of session. Okay, so here's where we're at. We have a terrible, terrible crisis here in Arizona, Uh, a crisis that, in my opinion, is not only bad for Arizona, not only bad for the United States, but certainly voter integrity. Mark, what is going on? Well, we have a battle going on between good and evil. It could not be any more uh, succinct than that. Uh, we've got a judiciary, which, and as much as people want to hoot on the judiciary, they actually, they're pretty close to being right. This is the responsibility of the legislature. It is not the responsibility of the governor, secretary of state, or the courts. Now, the courts period- have, have seen a, just a multitude of cases that have gone before them, and they've been asked to decide on different issues. And what I find interesting is nobody seems to have standing. Oh, isn't that terrible? That's amazing. So it used to be that the courts were a place that you went to in order to resolve controversies. And if you were harmed in any way. And if you were harmed. And now the courts are basically saying, well, you don't have standing. Well, I would advocate then if you're not going to hear cases, maybe we need to cut the court's budget by 10%. But that's a case for another day. Um, What we have right now is is a case in controversy, at least in the state of Arizona. Now, there are other states, for example, Georgia, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, Nevada, and the latest entrance into this is New Mexico, believe it or not. Really? New Mexico has also joined the fray. So we now have seven states where we've seen evidence of fraud, and we've got people who are saying, oh, these are not the drones you're looking for. But at the same time, they acknowledge that there was fraudulent activity. Now, keep in mind that in the state of Arizona, we're looking at a delta, a a difference between uh, Mr. Biden and Mr. Trump of 10,000, I believe it's 457 votes. Yeah, it's about. That's a very small number. 
in an election that had millions of votes. So I, I find it stunning that we go through the November election integrity hearing, um, which I had the good fortune to uh, have colleagues of mine. We actually drew that together. Yes, after, and I want to thank you for that. That was very. Oh, it's my pleasure. That I'm, was very, uh, I think, very bold of you. And and you know, I tell our audience all the time, we look at people as either warriors or wimps, and you are certainly a warrior. Well, thank you very much. You're you're too kind. The. Um, when I was unable to get approval to use the house hearing facilities, um, and after asking a couple of times, um, the service to constituents was absolutely necessary. I mean, we're getting, I'm still getting um, hundreds of emails a day. I mean, to the point where the email system in the, at the state has basically become useless because uh, I, I'm getting so many emails, and that's not to say that I don't want to hear from people. That's not what I'm saying at all. I can't communicate with other people about any other issue other than election fraud. That is all people want to talk about. So I got news for the Maricopa County Board of Supervisors. You guys think this is going to go away? This ain't going away. But you are. Um, <laughs> no, I'm not go going away. away. I'm no, not they're going to go away. I'm not going away for two years. So on November 30th, um, I, I was able to recruit some members from both the House and the Senate, bring them together for um, an objective venue so that we could hear evidence from uh, Mayor Giuliani and the president's team so that we could have folks in the community who had, had witnessed things that they knew were irregular so that people who had signed affidavits would be able to come forth and give their... Um, presentation, their, their testimony on a video record and create an archive of it. And what we heard was 11 hours of testimony that talked about everything from uh, preventing poll watchers from doing their job to unattended ballot boxes, uh, boxes full of ballots where there was no chain of custody, um, where uh, there was evidence, in, at least in other states, of Dominion software source code that had essentially they claimed it was a glitch. Well, glitch is kind of code word for a program thing that we didn't want you to know about. So, for example, Antrim County, Michigan, um, roughly 6,000 votes were flipped from one candidate to another. And they tried to talk that off originally as a human error. Okay, so when you, and, and I, I, I noticed immediately when they were trying to describe this, they talked about, well, the calculation software, calculation software. Think about that, calculation software. I thought we were tabulating votes, not calculating votes. <laughs> it's an interesting uh, slip of the tongue. There. But I think it's an important uh, dis distinction because what came out in the testimony on November 30th, and by the way, I, I, I need to finish that thought. That hearing was all about addressing the community's concern that we have a free and fair election that wasn't tainted by fraud, that, that we were able to explain some of the things that people knew intuitively. They, they don't believe the vote. I mean, for example, in Oro Valley, we would see Trump trains every weekend that were between a mile and two miles long. I mean, car after car after car after car with flags and I mean, every Saturday, yet you maybe saw three or four uh, folks standing on a corner with a Biden sign <laughs> doing the sign wave. The, I mean, people just know instinctively something is terribly wrong here. So from the November 30th hearing, we were able to take testimony from Colonel Phil Waldron, who is he's an expert in cyber warfare. Um, and he was explaining that with the Dominion software, you have source code that is underlying what is actually the, the county's code for tabulation or calculation, whichever one they were doing. But the source code is a Dominion product. And there's all kinds of shenanigans that can happen in source code that it'll pop itself up and he was trying to explain how that works. I'm not a tech guy. I was uh, gonna say, we don't quite So understand. trying to understand how this works, um, it was over the heads of a lot of people, but suffice it to say, he really hit a home run when he said, it's a difference between tabulation, counting of whole numbers, because when you run a ballot through, 
the bubble is either filled in or it's not filled in. Correct. So you're either counting a one or a zero. How is it that that ballot could come out 1.12? I've always wondered that. Why or they, why they 0.91. So what he, what he was explaining is this thing called fractional voting. And that is the crux of calculation versus tabulation. Yes. So, um, and, and frankly, that is a violation of something that goes all the way back to uh, the Warren court. And that's one person, one vote. So if I have a portion of my vote taken away and awarded to somebody else, and someone else's vote counts more than my vote, that's an equal protection issue. Yeah. So um, as we went through that day, Which is guaranteed by the federal constitution. Which is, a, yeah, that's one of those funny little things. It's called the civil right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, one person, one vote. So as we went through the day, 11 hours worth of testimony, um, it, was, it became clear and convincing that there is substantial opportunity for fraud and that there was actual fraud that we could observe. Now, Dr. Shiva, and I can't say his last name, Excuse I can't me. either. But Dr. Shiva really hit a home run when he took the actual voting numbers and was able to graph those out. It's the thing that looks like a kind of sideways football and was able to graph out both Republican votes and Democrat votes. Now, keep in mind, these are actual votes. This is the real voting record. Mm -hmm. And their job was to try and build a mathematical model that would explain the actual voting record. The only way they could do that was to show that 130% of Democrats voted for Joe Biden and only 30% voted for President Trump. I, I'm sorry, a negative 30% voted for President Trump. So in that, he was able to say, if you're going to go on a hunt for fraud, here's where you need to go. Now, keeping that in mind, Fast forward to, I believe, December 14th, Senator Eddie Farnsworth, uh, with uh, the, the permission of uh, President Karen Fan of the Senate, held a Senate Judiciary Committee meeting. And in that meeting, uh, they heard six hours of testimony and, and some conversation from the Maricopa County Board of Supervisors and from the Maricopa County Elections Director. And during that, that period of time, they said, oh, you know, we want to be cooperative. We want to be transparent. Um, you know, we're, we're fine with an audit. We're, you know, just made all kinds of flowery statements. And then at the end of the hearing, uh, Senator Francis says, well, good. Um, so we're going to be issuing some subpoenas. One subpoena is for the ballot image. So when you, when you submit a ballot into the, the, the ballot reader, it creates an image. Now, under federal law, because this was a federal election, you have to keep the ballots and the ballot images for 22 months so that they can be inspected. Okay. They can be verified. They can be audited. Uh, there is a software that has been developed that is able to read those ballots and determine whether or not those ballots are legitimate or illegitimate. And there's a number of things that, that it looks to, and I don't want to go down a rabbit hole. But we also want to take a look at the paper. Um, it's been alleged that there was a massive dump of illegitimate ballots brought in through the back door. Uh, but until we do a forensic audit, we're not going to know. And I think that that's the crux of the matter. That's why um, I believe that's why Senator Farnsworth and, and President Fan uh, issued subpoenas, not just for the ballot images, but also for the Dominion uh, machines and software. And this isn't about just this election. This is about restoring confidence in the integrity of our electoral process. Extremely important. And if we don't do that now, there will constantly be a lingering question in people's minds over, did my vote really count? And the, 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 the move here is to count every legitimate, every legal vote. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things that happened uh, is they, they, the they, the left used um, mail-in ballots as a pretense for essentially stuffing the mail system with ballots. That's what this is about. <coughs> well, you know, uh, if, if I may, just, just, just for a moment here, um, 
a lot of people know that uh, uh, when I was a uh, career man, I was an auditor and uh, dealing with both numbers and procedures <laughs> and so forth. And here's one of the things you mentioned about Michigan, where 6,000 votes for Donald Trump were actually given to uh, Biden. <clears throat> When you take numbers from one person and give it to another person, you double the number, okay? Yeah, because so, it's, it, it's a multitude of two. You take them right. away and you flip them. And you flip so them. So, for example, in Arizona, if if 11 electoral votes were taken away from Biden given to Trump, that's a 22-vote 22 22 move. move. And so what I'm saying is you talked about 6,000 votes. If that happened here, Donald Trump would have won. That's that would be twelve thousand votes. That's a move of twelve thousand votes. And Donald Trump That's would right. have been the, been the winner. That's right. So, it bothers me, Mark, that the board of supervisors. First of all, I I don't think they did due diligence on anything. I don't think they did due diligence when they when they picked up the the machines because I don't think they did it. I think uh, Fontes, the Democrat, and his staff are the one that said we're going to use Dominion. I don't think they did due diligence. Yeah, I, I agree with you. And I think at the end of the day, it's about more than due diligence. It's, it's about, you're a political subdivision of the state. Exactly. You have the authority and the power that you have because the state has given it Authorized. to you. Yes. Because you are a functionary of state government to see to it that state policy policy set by the legislative branch which is the lawmakers in the exactly state. you're you're there to see to it that policy is executed that's the that's the role of gov of, of exactly. the county government unfortunately what we have is a situation where civics is no longer taught people don't know what the role of the county government is because they're not taught what the role of the county government is Exactly. So we've got a, a confluence of situations here where we've got uh, a, and I would and call my, him my a rogue. My contention is that the Board of Supervisors could not turn down uh, accepting the petition, or I'm, I'm sorry, the, the subpoena. They had to respond to it. They can't go to a court and have yeah. a court say that it's not it's not responsible. Well, they, uh, they, I think that they, they suffered a, a rather serious defeat when they had a show cause hearing on the, on the first issuance of the subpoenas. And the, the judge said, okay, you guys need to understand something here. This subpoena, these subpoenas, carry the same weight as a subpoena out of this court. And, and I'm paraphrasing here, they also carry with them the same penalty that could be issued. Which is? Which is a, it's a class two misdemeanor, but it is a crime. Could be arrested. To refuse to comply with the subpoena. So they could be arrested. They could be arrested. Now, their argument is, well, they're trying to use a number of different points of contention, but that's not really the issue. The issue is, do you or do you not care <laughs> about free and fair elections? Yes, yes. I mean, at the, end of the, at the end of the analysis, if we are going to be a nation um, that is governed by the consent of the governed, we the people. We have to have reliance that the election is free and fair. Otherwise, we're no longer a republic. We have become an oligarchy with the skin on it that's make believe. It's fictitious. Yep. And I'm not willing to live in a nation like that. That's why I am on this like a pit bull on a pork chop. Okay. So summing it up, where do we stand? So uh, I am today. I am circulating a letter uh, amongst members of both the House and Senate. I'll be on a plane at uh, 0600 tomorrow morning, headed to Washington, D.C. I have an evidence book along with a resolution asking Vice President Trump, or I'm sorry, Vice President Pence to um, essentially hold, press the pause button, if you will, Mr. Vice President, until such time as due process has played itself out, and that is, in, in, the leg that is in the courts, there is litigation ongoing right now, and until that's resolved, I don't know how, in good conscience, Congress can move forward. That that would be a violation of due process. At the at the same time, we have asked for a forensic audit in those states where we have a serious controversy over whether or not uh, there are false ballots, there are are if there's fraud of any kind, and because the margins are so narrow, that's what makes this so important. If we if, if it was a 160,000 vote difference, 
okay, um, whichever candidate had the majority, you're probably the winner and the other guy should say, congratulations. That's not where we're at. Where we're at is 0.0001%. It is so small that a significant finding in a forensic audit, like you said, of just 6,000 votes, that becomes a 12,000 vote uh, flip from and one Donald direction Trump to the other. Arizona. Now we're not asking, uh, we're, we're asking that the, um, that the electoral uh, college electors be reclaimed, but not allocated elsewhere. Mm -hmm. So in Arizona, uh, we have two slates of electors. Uh, the governor signed off on one slate, which I believe in my heart of hearts is a fraudulent as assignment. And then we also have... And that happens to be the news of the day here in Arizona. Right? Yeah. Um, you've heard that, but it's... Uh... I, I've heard that. Uh, I, I, I was stunned to learn that not only did the governor sign a document at the exact time that we were holding the hearing, uh, there was nothing magical about the, the 11 o'clock hour. I mean, if, if the, the, I was, the executive I was of the state well. should know or should have known as, as his due diligence in such a document, because no, keep in mind, no hearing had been held. All we had was this, this uh, signing of the canvas. It's official. Okay, so these numbers add up, but there, there's too many irregularities here to permit that to go forward. So he decided to go ahead and sign at 11 o'clock, and just as kind of a John McCain-like thumbs down, um, pull his phone out and make a point of hanging up on the president. Now, what was that all about? That that I, 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 that is so beneath the position of governor. I was stunned to see that after our hearing. Right. I, so I was too. We're asking the vice president um, hold off, and uh, you know, there's there are a growing number of senators and um, representatives in Congress <clears throat> who are going to stand up and object. My question is, if you're not standing up and objecting, why are you in office? Your job is to see to it that we have what? Free and fair elections. Yes. And that the consent of the governed is represented. That's called the guarantee clause. It is in the United States Constitution. And for any elected official to ignore that, I think is a dereliction of their duty. That's right. We're here with Mark Fincham, and this man is a hero in my book in Arizona, and we're, we're thrilled to have you here. Any last words? Um, hold those accountable who are not in support of free and fair elections, who are not in support of a forensic audit. Um, I think that the vast majority of members in Arizona are, um, but there are those who, quite frankly, rode into office on the president's coattails, and now they seem to have abandoned him. So those people probably need to be primary. Some of them will pay the price, especially yeah. the Board of Supervisors here in Maricopa County. Yeah. They don't understand what's happening well, to them. Well, and but here's the message. So. Uh, this isn't going away. No, it's not. It won't go away until there's a forensic audit, and the, you can prove to the people that they have been heard, that they have given their consent to the individual who is about to rise to the highest office of the nation. That, I can assure you, it is not going to go away. Mark Fincham, thanks for being here on Hub Radio. We'll see you on the other side. And by the way, pass this around. Make sure everybody gets to see this video. It's really important that the nation understand that we're fighting here in Arizona. and We're fighting back. So 